I'm not exposed to the alternate story and the Palestinian narrative. Uh, my point is this. Given the United States and our government's support, continuous support, car launch to Israel, contributes to the blanking of this story and this kind of what the facts that were in the film, I want to focus particularly on this nonviolence uh, practice that the Palestinians have been engaged, not just in the first intifada, even today. You talked about Sheikh Jarrah, you talked about uh, East Jerusalem, home demolished uh, near the Silwan, uh, uh, and nothing happens. Uh, Gaza is still encircled and besieged for the last three, four years. And nothing gets in, and yet there is no rockets. There are no rockets that are going from Gaza into Israel. Why does the siege continue and the assault on the uh, on the ship, on the Turkish ship, nine people get killed, 15? These are the kind of things that continue. And my point is this: that the United States government, as long as it continues supporting the Israelis and you know going behind this sham of so-called negotiations and yet preventing anything going on in the ground with continuing our tax dollars to go $3 billion a year, then we are the obstacles to peace. We, the Americans, are obstacles to peace, specifically when we, instead of promoting nonviolence, we are really promoting violence on this side of the Israelis. I want you to come. Um, there is no question that the American government is a key uh, piece to peace. <laughs> and uh, in fact, Ayad talks a lot about that. Ayad Murad, when he was, we brought him to Tribeca and then to Silver Dogs in Washington, D.C. We had a Capitol Hill screening. We had a screening for uh, Republicans, conservatives, uh, groups. Um, we had um, really massive outreach on the policy. Uh, making world and, and he had quite a bit of, of an opportunity to, to talk about what's going on on the ground and to express the importance of, of the American government really um, changing uh, its its attitude towards what's going on on the ground. I am I'm less um, let's say hopeful about governments. I'm much more hopeful about people. And uh, I think that, you know, and Aya talks about that as well. He says, we can keep talking about all the time how the American government is with Israel and how we are without anybody. Um, what we need to think about is how do we bring the American people to our, to our side. We need to be strategic about it. And, and so really um, thinking through what are the leverages, like what, you know, I think one of the things that have been really surprising me about this film and I didn't think about it because I'm, you know, I've been living in the United States for 11 years, but I've been completely, um, you know, immersed in sort of the East Coast culture of the United States. And I know very little about the rest of the U.S., but some of the screenings that we've had for people in the South, for example, um, was they were really talking, they mentioned how the imagery of the olive tree um, being pulled out of its roots uh, reminded them of um, sceneries of lynchings in the South, in the Civil War times. And, and, and I was like, this is so, I was so amazed that people were making that that, that touch that kind of nerve. Um, and, and the idea of farming and private property and the community self-reliance and the defending of, of, of your, you know, of the fabric of your society and all of these um, ideas that I think really resonate uh, with, with Americans um, you know, really talking about the values that we all share as, as humans, the family, the father, the daughter, like all of these things that I think Americans have for a long time been uh, led to associate themselves much more with the Israeli way of experience um, and, and, and identifying much more with that than with the Palestinian experience. And, and I don't, you know, for me, my work is not about getting them to be pro-Palestinian in any way. I do this for Israeli society as much as I do for Palestinian society. I think Israeli society is not going to exist in 20 years, possibly, if this situation is not resolved. And it's going to be a, an absolute tragedy if this population that, as Michael mentioned, suffered one of the biggest horrors in history uh, to um, have to go through anything bad again. And I want, I'm afraid that at the end of my career as a filmmaker, I will be making films about protecting Jews in the Middle East. And I don't want that. 
And I want both societies to be able to thrive side by side with respect to one another. And I think that this is the way to do that.